If I told you that America has a fresh water problem, would you believe me? These are satellite images taken of Lake Erie from 2015 to 2020. Notice anything off? The Great Lakes hold roughly 20% of the world's surface fresh water, and Lake Erie alone provides drinking water to more than 11 million residents in the United States. Its western basin is one of the most biodiverse regions in all of the Great Lakes, but its shallow depth and warm temperatures make it the perfect breeding ground for algae. In 2014, Toledo, Ohio became the victim of decades of neglect, shutting down its drinking water to half a million residents for three days. But let's take a few steps back and identify the culprit of these blooms. This region around the Great Lakes has been called the heartland of America. When it comes to agriculture, there's hardly an area in the world that compares to it. Harmful no algal blooms in this case, particularly, are starting from an excess of phosphorus out in Lake Erie, particularly on the western end of, of Lake Erie. And from scientific research, we know that the majority of that problem is coming from agriculture. Cyanobacteria thrive in the presence of excess nutrients coming from fertilizer and manure runoff. These photosynthesizing single-celled organisms quickly form widespread colonies. While several species can create these damaging blooms, the result is the same. Stinky green goo covering miles and miles of the lake's surface. When you have all of this algae, it's, it's basically breathing, taking in um, nutrients, but also oxygen and other things. And it particularly actually sits in the middle of Lake Erie and creates a huge problem with what we call a dead zone. And you know, also when that algae is so thick, it is really changing the amount of sunlight that gets down to the bottom. It, it can impact plants. It's changing the way the fish move. It can also um, have an impact on birds. And unfortunately, we also see deaths of dogs that, that play in this water. And recently we've even found um, there are impacts from just recreating near that much of this toxin. But despite being the smallest of the Great Lakes by volume, Lake Erie is exposed to other great man-made problems that have severe implications. In fact, agricultural runoff isn't the only thing that's being dumped back into the lake. Municipalities around Lake Erie have been suffering with aging water infrastructure for decades. Historically, cities like Cleveland combine sewer systems that carry sewage from houses, industrial wastes, and stormwater in one pipe. Combined sewer systems are a relic of our past, and we have to stop thinking about them as all bad. And if you go back before we had combined sewer systems, basically we didn't have sewer systems. So our untreated sewage and all of our other waste was going into waterways and out to the lake. While combined sewer systems were once innovative, they are now a modern problem. The Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District just put out an advisory about a sewer overflow that said more than, more than 100 more than 142,000 gallons, gallons of untreated sewage and stormwater, and stormwater into flowed into Lake Erie in only 15 minutes. The problem with combined sewer overflows comes when there are heavy, intense rainfalls um, or where there is so much impervious surface, so much roadways, so much rooftops that even in a light rainfall, you get a lot of runoff moving down into their storm sewers. And with climate change increasing storm severity. What happens is it can be too much for the wastewater treatment plants to handle, too much for the pipe networks to handle. And that's the problem because now we have sewage back in our lake and back in our streams without it being treated. This infrastructure also has a human consequence. And unfortunately, not everyone in the dependent communities are affected equally. On average, a family of four in Cleveland faces a water bill of $1,317 per year. Compare this to the average bill in the desert city of Phoenix, 
of only $399. The cost of upgrading is often borne by the owner. And many people can't afford to upgrade and run the risk of hazardous living conditions. And unfortunately now, um, within the next year or two, there are studies that show about a third of uh, people in our country won't be able to af have affordable water anymore. With rising costs, poor neighborhoods and majority Black and Latino neighborhoods are disproportionately being affected, often resulting in shutoffs of this basic need. What we see right now is that 40% uh, of the population in the city of Detroit lives in abject poverty. 60% of the population in the city of Detroit is households headed up by uh, black women. And then 70% uh, of the population that works in the city doesn't live in the city. But then when you connect that to water and water rates, almost 40% of the population of the entire state gets its water from an infrastructure that was built on the backs of the residents and taxpayers of Detroit. But Great Lakes communities are certainly not without hope. Regional leaders like Alicia Smith of the Junction Coalition are forming tech networks to empower Toledo neighborhoods to ensure their drinking water is safe from lake to tap. We have been able to host through the Ohio Community uh, Climate Fund, along with being able to have the Tech Hub funded with We the People of Detroit, our very first lead education network where we can talk about how to test for lead, what to do, and employ young people to test that water, to get the education around the work of sampling citizen science. Other organizations, like the Cleveland Water Alliance, are gathering innovators across the region to generate solutions to Lake Erie's biggest problems. The organization has spearheaded Erie Hack, a hackathon competition that brings participants from a wide range of disciplines to reimagine a sustainable future for Lake Erie. You all have the opportunity to not only make an impact locally, but also hold the potential to have your ideas and innovations make waves globally. We're uniquely positioned to utilize our Great Lakes to innovate, invest in, and elevate technologies that will conserve the vitality of Lake Erie and beyond. So yes, I think it's safe to say that we indeed have a fresh water problem. And while it's quite unlikely that the Earth will turn into a giant, worm-filled desert, or that we'll be walking around with high-tech bodysuits to recycle our sweat for drinking water, perhaps we should take Frank Herbert's 1965 science fiction novel, Dune, a little more seriously. Because, as we all know, fresh, fresh water, water is the is future. The future. Um, you know, we've all heard this, this old axiom that the next wars will be fought over water. And we, we want to avoid that. <laughs> We want everybody to have access to affordable water. This video was brought to you in part by the Cleveland Water Alliance and the Greater Toledo Community Foundation. To learn more about Erie Hack and find ways to get involved, visit www.clevelandwateralliance.org slash eriehack.